All right, everyone. So in this lesson, I'm going to be taking you into the main ad account for Flex Posture, and I'm going to show you exactly how I launched the product with Facebook. So first, a few things I want to clarify. So right now, I've got the lifetime stats pulled up. And as you can see, I spent 513000 to make back 990000 so for a ROAS of 1.93. Now, in reality, this column, you can add about 5 to 10% because Facebook doesn't track all conversions accurately. And so there's a few conversions that we're missing here. And so the real ROAS was slightly above 2.0. Now, another thing is this ad account is all in Canadian dollars. And so the numbers that you're seeing, if they seem a little high, that's because it's in Canadian dollars. And so you can divide it by 1.3 to 1.35 to get it to US dollars, depending on the day, you know, because of the exchange rate. And so in reality, these, this account was responsible for about 750,000 US dollars in sales, which is a large majority of these sales for Flex Posture. And the rest of the sales came from a mix of Instagram influencers and Google ads, which I'm going to show you later in this section. And also a little bit from another Facebook ad account that I started using near the end of the near the end of when I was running the store. But the whole launch was done just with this ad account. And so I'm going to show you exactly how um, exactly step by step how I launched it now. Last thing I want to point out before we get started is that I have a filter on for the campaign name and it must contain FP. The reason that I do this is FP stands for Flex Posture. And so right now I'm only showing campaigns that are relevant to Flex Posture because there was one or two campaigns that I did on this ad account that weren't relevant to Flex Posture. And so I just wanted to filter out that data. And so this is all this is, you know, this is all the Flex Posture data. And I'm going to show you step by step how I launched the product. So let's get right into it. So the first day was the 21st. So if I go to the 20th, if I go to the 20th, you'll see that there was nothing spent. And if I go to the 21st, you'll see that this is when I started spending. So what did I do on the very first day? Well, so I had this video ad. This was my first video ad. And I already showed, you, I already showed this to you in the creating your one product brand module. I showed you how I created this first ad. And this was the first ad that I launched with. And so the first thing that I did is that I posted this ad on my page. So I didn't create it. I didn't create an ad inside of ads manager. I posted it on my page. Now, the reason that I like doing this when I'm starting a new store is that, you know, when your page is empty, it kind of looks, you know, it doesn't look very active. It doesn't look very trustworthy. And so when you're starting out a new page for a new brand, I like to post, um, I like to put, to run my ads as page posts to get some engagement on the page and to make it look really active. And so another benefit of doing that, of using page posts instead of using dark posts is that you can get some organic traffic and, you know, Facebook rewards pages that have a lot of real engagement. And so by doing page posts, you can get lower CPM sometimes. Now, there are some downsides to using page posts, uh, namely is you're, you can't choose the call to action. And you also, well, you can, you can add a call to action, but I didn't do that. And so it would just default to the learn more call to action. And the other thing is that when you do page posts, a lot of people can find your ads. And so if people you know, use like keywords to try to find ads, they can find your ads when they search on Facebook. And so there's some pros and cons to using page posts, but when I'm starting out with a new store, I like using page posts. I think that it really helps make the page look more active. So what I did is I posted this ad to the page. Now I deleted it now because um, I was running these ads without proper watermarking and I was starting to scaling them and a lot of people were copying them. And so I deleted everything and I reposted them with the watermarks, like just to show you the watermarks. Um, I would always have watermarks. All the videos that are left over have watermarks like this because too many people were, st were stealing them. And so if you're doing page posts with watermarks, um, you're good. And so that's what I was doing. And so I posted this video as a page post and the caption, just to show you the caption, I think it was the same one that I used here. So improve your posture instantly, get it while it's still 50% off plus free worldwide shipping. And so that's what I did. I posted it as a page post. And then I went to ads manager and I created a PP campaign for that page post. So I created a new PP campaign and then the ad, I just clicked use existing posts and I selected that post. And so that's what I did. And so I can't show you the post because like I said, I deleted it. Like if I go to preview, it doesn't exist anymore. And so that's what I did. I created a PP campaign. Now this PP campaign, I had two ad sets in it. One was worldwide, excluding the U S Canada, UK and Australia. And so just to show you the actual targeting, it was worldwide excluding those four countries, 18 to 65 plus English, UK, English, US. So the two US lang the two English languages, and then it was on auto placements. So now it switched to edit placements, but it was on auto placements. And so that's what I did. And then I also had a US ad set. So same kind of idea, just the US 18 to 45. So I don't know why I did 18 to 45 instead of 18 to 65 plus. 
But um, yeah, so I was targeting and then same thing again, just that one ad inside. And the few, the other ads that were there, I think they were just different um, caption variations and I just turned them off because one was clearly performing better. And so, and so yeah, that's what I did to launch. Now, one thing that I would do differently is I wouldn't do um, a worldwide excluding these four countries and I wouldn't do this one either. I would just do one ad set for the one video and I would, um, I would target all e-packet countries. And so instead of doing worldwide excluding these countries, I would target all e-packet countries. Now, another thing that I would also do is I would test at least three variations of the video. So when I first launched, I was testing only this vid number one, which was this video, instead of testing three variations. Now, I always test three variations now because, you know, you can really get, you can find a creative that performs a lot better than, you know, the first one that you automatically assume is going to be the best ad. And so that can make the that can make a whole difference once you start actually scaling your campaigns. And so I would have de definitely tested more than just one creative right off the bat here. But I got lucky and the one that I tested actually performed quite well. But you know, I would definitely test at least three. So what I would do is I would post three to this page. I would post all three different variations to the page. And then I would create um, one ad set for each. So I would, I would create one ad set and then I would duplicate it twice. And then there would be three ad sets targeting all e-packet countries um, with no detailed targeting, just English language. And I would have the videos inside. And so that's how I would launch. But in this case, I only had this one ad. As you can see, um, it was doing quite well for a PPE campaign, excluding the four main countries, right? I was getting a lot of engagement. I was getting a lot of reach really cheap. The CPM was 0 0.16 cents. Um, I mean, 16 cents. And it was, this is Canadian dollars. So, you know, that's like 13, 13 cents US. And I actually even got a sale on this ad set on the first day, right? So this was a PPE campaign and I got a sale. So to me, that was like a huge sign that I was onto something that I had a product that was going to be a winning product. And so I ran this, um, I ran this ad set during the day. I, I got a lot of video views on it. I got 150, uh, 162,000 people reached. And so that was enough people that I could build a 95% video viewers custom audience from that video right away. And so that's what I did. And I built a 95% video viewers custom audience. And then I built lookalike audiences from that right away as well. And so, um, on that same day, I launched some lookalike audiences. So I created a new campaign. And so optimizing for website conversions. And then I just started testing 95% video viewers, lookalike audiences, optimizing for purchase. So just to show you that. So I was also testing some lookalike audiences from beauty charcoal. So that's what these BC buyers LTVs are. Um, I started testing lookalike audiences from um, beauty charcoal buyers. Now that didn't work well at all. And so as you can see, I spent money on that and it just didn't work out at all. Um, all those ad sets, none of them got sales. However, the 95% video viewers, if I sort by these sales, you can see that I got two sales from these 95% video viewers ad sets. And so essentially all I was doing is I was testing all these different 95% video viewers lookalike audiences for a, a, a lot of different countries. So 95% video viewers, 1%, 1 to 2%, and then 2 to 5%. And I was testing them for the US, for Canada, for the UK, and then I was also doing Denmark, Spain, and France. And so that's a weird selection of countries. If I were to do this again, I would only focus on the US, the UK, Canada, and Australia. But I would do everything else the same. I would just, you know, I would create a new campaign, target with purchase optimization, the 95% video viewers, and then no detailed targeting. And that's all I was doing. I was testing all these different audiences, um, scaling horizontally. So this was still the first day, right? And I was able to get two sales, which is pretty good, even though I was losing money, but I was getting data and that was my main goal. I just wanted to start getting a lot of data so that I can start testing new lookalike audiences beyond just 95% video viewers. And that was the whole strategy because with something like, with like a posture corrector, it's a very broad product, right? And so interests aren't really the way to go. The way to go is to collect data and then to collect and to create your own audiences, to create your own lookalike audiences that you can target. And so that's exactly what I was doing. I was basically um, trying to spend as much money as possible to start getting some data and then to start testing the new lookalike audiences. And so that's what I did. And I think that also on this first day, I, w I got really excited about this product because even though I was losing money and the return on that spend was 0.6, I knew that I was onto a winner for sure because, you know, this these are all very broad audiences that I was testing. You know, I got a sale on a PP campaign. I was getting sales on my lookalikes when they were just getting started. Um, you know, I started the midday and I still managed to get some sales. So I knew that I was onto a winner. So what I did is I also scheduled some Instagram posts for the next day. 
And so I scheduled a few Instagram posts for the next day just to start kickstarting my sales, right? Um, so I scheduled, I probably spent like $100 scheduling some posts for the next day. And all that did is that it got more traffic on my website, it got more sales, more add to carts, and it really just kickstarted the amount of data that I had to work with with Facebook. So let me show you the next day. On the 22nd, so on the 22nd, you can see that my amount spent went up quite significantly and so did the return on ad spend. So I spent $900 to make back 1.45. And what was I spending on? So I was still spending on this PPE campaign, same thing. Um, I actually increased the budget. And the reason why is that if you have a lot of engagement on your posts, Facebook rewards you with lower CPMs. And so I always run, I always run PPE campaigns alongside my main campaigns just so I have a lot of engagement and so that I can get lower CPMs. So I was running this CP, I was running this, PP campaign and it was still getting sales. I got two sales on that campaign for a return on ad spend of 1.0. So, you know, not a crazy return on ad spend, but still interesting. Um, you know, I, I wasn't losing too much money with this and I was getting the engagement, which helps me to lower the CPM for my other campaigns. And so the main thing that I was doing is I was still scaling out these lookalike audiences. So if we go to the amount spent, um, you'll see that this, the same thing I was still doing is I was just testing all these 95% video viewers, lookalike audiences to a bunch of different countries. So the US, I also tested Brazil, which didn't do so well. Uh, then Canada, the UK, France, Denmark. Um, yeah, I was testing all these different countries, Spain. Um, and honestly, if I were to do this again, I would probably focus just on the uh, four biggest countries, so the US, the UK, Canada, and Australia, because those are really the ones that you can focus in on and start scaling to, as you'll see later on. Like all these different countries that I was testing, like Denmark, Spain, um, Brazil, really nothing came out of that. I should have just focused on the US, Canada, UK, and Australia. But if I start, if I sort by return on ad spend, you'll see that even at this point, I was getting some great return on ad spends, right? I was able to get 8.7 on this one, uh, five, 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 four point three, like three point nine, three point seven, and so I was already getting quite good results. Just you know, when I was scaling horizontally, at this point I wasn't even optimizing. I wasn't killing any ad sets yet. I was just scaling horizontally, trying to spend more money, collect more data, and a lot of these ad sets were performing quite well. And so you can see that I also launched new lookalike audiences. So I started launching um, website visitors, initiate checkout. Um, buyers, so I, I already had enough data to test buyers at this point because I had over 100 sales because I had, you know, I had the sales from the last day and then I had the sales from that day, from the 22nd, and I had a few sales from the Instagram promotions that I scheduled. And so I had just enough to start testing these buyers lookalikes as well. Um, but, you know, if I had more data, they probably would have done better. So I was testing all these different lookalike audiences and it started working well. Now on the second day, so on, on the night of the 22nd, what I did is this is when I started optimizing my ad sets. And so what I did is I looked at the last two days of data, so the 21st and the 22nd, and then I sorted by the return on ad spend once again, and I killed anything that was below my break-even return. So anything um, anything that was below this break-even return on ad spend, which was 1.6, so anything below here, I turned it off. And so, the, how you know your, your, your break-even return on ad spend, you just do the, your, the sale price of your product on top of your margin. And so in this case, it was 1.55 approximately. And so anything below 1.6, I would just turn it off. And so the result is that on the next day, if I go to the 23rd, you can see that my return on ad spend went up again. So 1.76 at this point, I was profitable. I was spending profitably on these lookalike audiences. And so this is also when I launched retargeting. And so I launched retargeting. Um, so I launched, which, um, let's see. So yeah, I had five, uh, I had six different uh, retargeting ad sets. So I was retargeting Instagram because I started running a few Instagram promotions. So I retargeted people from Instagram. And then I also retargeted um, view content, initiate checkout, website visitors, and add to cart. And so I'm gonna talk more about retargeting in a separate section, but this is when I launched retargeting. And so I was also, I was still scaling these lookalike audiences and that's what was bringing the majority of the sales. And so let's go into this campaign, see what was happening. So sort by amount spent. So as you can see, I was literally just testing all these different lookalike audiences still. So I was, you know, as soon as I had data to test new lookalike audiences, I would test new ones. So every night what I would do is I would go and I would kill the ad sets below my break even return on ad spend in the last few days. And I would create new, new ad sets with new lookalike audiences that I created every night. And so I would test all these different lookalike audiences, like 
um, initiate checkout, view content, um, buyers, um, you know, view content again, um, viewed brace. So this is just view content refined by a URL parameter, um, website visitors. Um, you know, so you guys get the point. I was really just scaling horizontally, testing all these different lookalike audiences. And you can see a lot of them were doing quite well. A lot of them were doing quite well. And I also started scaling this one. So this is the only ad set that I started scaling horizontally. So I noticed that 95% video viewers, two to 5% for the US was doing well. And so I just duplicated that to $200 and it did, um, it did quite well. So I was able to spend 140 and make back 450. And so I just scaled an ad set that I saw was doing really well over the last few days. I had like two, two days of data to show that it was a good ad set. And so I duplicated it to $200, didn't turn off the original ad set and it did well. Now, um, you'll notice that I did have manual bidding on this ad set. However, um, that wasn't necessary, to be honest. With a budget of $200, you really don't need a, a bid cap because it's just not high enough of a budget that Facebook is going to blow through it super quick. So if you have a $200 budget, um, this bid cap probably didn't make a difference. It was just it was just there. It was because a, a bid cap, is you're still it's the same bidding strategy, right? It's still lowest cost. The only difference is that the, you, you set a bid cap of the max you're willing to pay. But, you know, I probably, um, the lowest cost bidding strategy probably didn't bid over $30 anyways with a budget of $200. And so it, I would have gotten the same results probably without a bid cap. But that's what I was doing at this point, really mainly just scaling horizontally, testing all these different audiences. And so let's go on to the next day. To the 24th. And so now the return on ad spend started dipping a little bit. But, you know, retargeting was doing quite well. But this, I spent a lot more. So three, you know, the, the amount spent went up to, if I go to the 23rd, go to 23rd, you see that it was 1.5K. And then massive jump in return on, I, not in return on ad spend, but in amount spent, almost tripled, well, doubled, over doubled. So if I go, the main jump was in this campaign. So I deployed a ton of new ad sets. So let's see what I was doing. So at this point, this is when I started scaling a lot of a lot of ad sets vertically. So all the ad sets that were doing really well, I duplicated them to higher budgets. So you can see a ton of them had like um, two hundred dollars spent, hundred dollars spent. And so at this point, I was really just taking my best ad sets and then duplicating them to higher budgets. And I was also still testing new lookalike audiences. And, and so really at this point, all I was doing was testing as many lookalike audiences as possible. So I was testing, you know, I was testing new countries like New Zealand. Um, Australia and you know new types of lookalike audiences like 95% video viewers Instagram um, you know all these different lookalike audiences that I could test so like anything that I could test I would test it and I would try lookalike audiences for it like Instagram saves um, let's see if there's any other ones so no that's all but you can see that if I sort by return on ad spend there was a lot that were doing really well right and all I all I was doing was testing these lookalike audiences to scale my ad spend. And so the result was that my ad spend would increase a lot every day. Um, and every time I would do this and test a bunch of new lookalike audiences, my ad spend would, you know, my ad spend would go up a lot and the return on ad spend would go down because I was scaling horizontally to test all these new ad sets. But then since my ad spend increases so much, then I can kill everything that's not working. And then that leaves me with still a higher ad spend that I had before, but a higher ROAS, you know, so that's how you scale. You increase the budget a lot and then cut it back down a little bit and then increase a lot and then cut it back down a little bit and, you know, give and take. And so that's really how we're scaling at this point. And so, you know, still running the PPE campaign. And then if I go to the next day, um, if I go to the next day, same thing. So the return on ad spend went up and um, budget went down a little bit because I started killing the ad sets that weren't doing well, then creating new ones again to test new ad sets. And, you know, the, the PP, so the PP at this point, I think I started running a retargeting campaign, uh, a retargeting ad set within the PP. Uh, yeah, so I did. So I, I created a new ad set retargeting. And so I was retargeting page view 30. So I was retargeting everyone who uh, viewed my pages in the last 30 days with um, a Facebook post. So this was Facebook only since it was a Facebook post. And as you can see, it was doing a really good return on ad spend, spent $28 to make back 206 and so sometimes when you do retargeting with small audiences, PP can work really well. And so that's what I was doing just to diversify my retargeting a bit. So I was retargeting with PP, retargeting here. And then here I was just scaling lookalike audiences, testing all these different lookalike audiences. And so 
you know, I was duplicating the ones that were doing well at the higher budgets and then testing new ones at lower budgets. And as you can see, the ones at higher budgets weren't performing, performing so hot. But if I sort by return on ad spend, um, you'll see that there was a lot of, you know, a lot of the local like audiences at smaller budgets, the ones that I was scaling horizontally, those were doing really well. There was a ton above 2.0. There was a ton above three. There was some, you know, even the six, nine, 16. And so, you know, a lot of these were performing really well. Like this one right here, top visitors by time spent. This is an extremely underrated um, lookalike audience. People don't even know about it. You just have to create a top 25% visitors by time spent custom audience. Then you can create a lookalike audience and it'll work a lot better than just view content most of the time. And so, yeah, at this point, just, you know, testing all these different ad sets. And then at the end of the day, kill all the ones below my break even return on ad spend in the last few days just to make sure that I'm you know, taking into account all the data that I have, not just killing an ad set because it performed poorly on one day. And that's how I would optimize and that's how I was scaling. Now let's go to the next day again. So as you can see on this next day, 5.4K to make back 10.6K. So you know it was going really well just by following the simple blueprint of creating a bunch of new ad sets, new lookalike audiences, killing the ones that aren't working, creating more like the ones that are working, and scaling the individual ad sets horizontally, I mean vertically, scaling vertically the ad sets that have been proven to work. So let's go into here. Um, if we go to amount spent, um, so you'll see that I have a lot of these higher budget ad sets now, you know, spent 200, 200, um, a bunch of these spending 200 and they're profitable. And so these ad sets are scaled by grouping. And so that's what I'm gonna be talking about the next lesson. I'm gonna be talking about how you can scale these ad sets vertically by grouping them. And that's what I was doing here to get these great returns on ad spends, like this one, um, this one, um, this one. And I'm going to be talking about that in the next lesson, but I was also just scaling some vertically normal, like this one, the website visitors. This is just one lookalike audience that I duplicated to $200, and it was doing really well. And then again, a bunch of smaller, you know, different lookalike audiences that were just performing well, just scaling them horizontally. And so, you know, I was testing all these different things, and they were doing really well. And that's how I scaled the ad spend so quickly. Just new lookalike audiences every day, testing new lookalike audiences every day, um, creating a bunch of new ones, killing the ones that weren't working. And that's the blueprint. That's how I increased my ad spend without any interest targeting. And you know, within a few days, I was able to get to the point where I was spending $5,000 a day and getting back 10,000. And so extremely profitable and extremely simple blueprint, right? All I did was creating new lookalike audiences. I mean, I've said it a lot of times now, but I really want you guys to understand and I hope it makes sense. And so just to recap now, if I go to, you know, the 21st, which was the first day and then 10 days in to the 31st you can see that in the first 10 days, I was able to scale this brand new store, you know, that it was a completely brand new store. I was able to scale it from zero to $85,000 in sales with Facebook um, profitably at a return on ad spend of 1.98. And that, you know, in reality, the return on ad spend was a little bit higher because like I said before, Facebook doesn't accurately track all conversions. And so the return on ad spend was probably closer to 2.1. And so at this, with this, I was making, you know, 25% profit, uh, 20, 25% profit, and everything was looking really good. And that's, that's what I was doing. And now in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I was scaling by grouping, which is a lot of what I did here as well. Um, a lot for these for these bigger budget ad sets like this one, um, this one, this one. We'll be talking about that in the next lesson. And also, um, I'm going to be talking about, you know, I'm going to be talking a lot more about this ad account in the next lesson. So just stay tuned. I'm going to be talking a lot more about how I stayed consistent and scaled it beyond these first 10 days. All right. So I just want to quickly recap everything that I just went over. So you guys have, you know, a clear blueprint of what I was doing in case the ads manager walkthrough wasn't clear enough. So the first step is PPE. So ideally you wanna create, you wanna test three ads right off the bat with PPE. And the main thing that I recommend testing is the first three seconds of the video. So right off the bat, you wanna test three ads with PPE. In the case of Flex Posture, I only tested one right off the bat and that wasn't a good idea. I should have tested three. So ideally you wanna test three right off the bat and then create a new PPE campaign create three identical ad sets, one for each ad. So if you only have one ad, just one, but if you, you should have three, like I said, so three identical ad sets, uh, one for each ad, and then you target all ePacket countries. And then I'm gonna have the list of all ePacket countries below in the description for this um, this video. So all ePacket countries, and then no detail targeting except the um, that they speak English. And so one ad in each ad set, 
and that's all. So you don't put all ads in just one ad set. You have one ad in each ad set and you have three ad sets and then no detailed targeting. And then based on that PPE data, so you want to leave that running for a day or two, depending on how fast you're spending. So, you know, you can put the budget at 10 or $20 a day. And then one, you know, if you put the budget at $20 a day, one full day should be enough data for you to determine. So you need to spend about $20 to determine which, which ads are best or $10, $10 is fine too. If you spent $10 on each in total, you'll spend $30 and then you'll be fine. And then based on that PP data, you want to select the best ad. And so the one that has the lowest cost per engagement and also, you know, drives the most actions on your website, you want to pick the best ad based on the data and then build a 95% video viewers, custom audience from it. And then from that 95% video viewers, custom audience, you want to create lookalike audiences for the U S Canada, the UK and Australia from 1%, 1 to 2%, and 2 to 5%. And then you want to create a new website conversions campaign and then test all of those. So for those four countries and then three for each. So that's 12 ad sets right there. And then that's how you want to start launching your purchase optimization campaigns. Now at this point, if you have data from Instagram influencers, you can also start testing all the other lookalike audiences. So you can test Instagram engagement and um, assuming that you've already gone, you know, traffic and a few sales, you can test VC, you can test add to cart, you can test maybe initiate checkout and also purchase if you've gotten, you know, 100 or 200 sales already. Now, same idea. You want to test for the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, 1%, 1 to 2%, 2 to 5%, all optimizing for purchases. And now if you really want to start kickstarting your product like I did for Flex Posture, then it's a good idea to run Instagram influencers uh, right, you know, when you're first starting out just to kickstart and start getting more data so that you can scale your lookalike audiences faster. And so at this point, all you're doing is you're testing all the different lookalike audiences that you can and um, scaling horizontally that way. And then you can also test some lesser known lookalike audiences that a lot of people don't know about. So top 5% or top 25% visitors by time spent. Um, view content with a frequency parameter. So I call that VC2X. And then you can also test Instagram saves. So people who've saved your content on Instagram, and that's if you have done some Instagram influencers, you're gonna have a lot of Instagram saves and that audience is usually good to build lookalike audiences from. So just to show you, if I go inside here, um, you know, the highest return on ad spend audience for this period, for the July 21st to 30, to July 21st to the 31st, the highest return on ad spend one was this top, top visitors by time spent, top 5% visitors by time spent. Right, so it's an audience that not a lot of people know about, not a lot of people test, but I was able to get a 3.44 return on ad spend on this audience. Now, another one that's lesser known was this, this one that I was telling you about, the view content with the frequency parameter. So this, this audience, this custom audience is VC2X. What it is, is it's a view content audience, but only people who viewed content twice in the period. So if I do view content in the last 30 days, refined by the frequency parameter of 2x that means that it needs they're only going to be people who've seen who view content twice in the last 30 days and this is easy to do as well when you create the lookalike audience you just need to click refine by frequency and then greater or equal than two and so that's another one that not a lot of people test and by testing all these lesser known lookalike audiences you can scale horizontally even faster and that's what i was doing i was testing all these i was testing all these weird you know lookalike audiences that not a lot of people test and all the basic ones as well, you know, like video viewers, um, view content, add to cart, purchase, um, you know, Instagram saves. And so that's how you can really um, start scaling horizontally. Now, optimization. Every day you want to look at the past three days of data and then kill every ad set below your break-even return on ad spend. So every night, you know, once you start, when you create some new audiences, you also want to look at the last three days of data, including that day and kill all the audiences that are below your break-even return on ad spend. And that's how you're going to ensure that your return on ad spend keeps getting better, right? That you're not spending money on ad sets that are unprofitable. Now, if you have an ad set that doesn't have three days of data yet, but it's clear that it's not a good audience, you can also kill that too. So if you spent like $10 on an ad, on an ad set and you only got like two clicks, it's pretty obvious that it's not a good ad set. And so you can just kill that, that um, you can kill that ad set too. You don't have to wait three days because you're just going to waste money. But, you know, if, for example, you have an ad set that you spent $10 on and it's getting a good amount of clicks and a few add to carts, but no sales, I wouldn't kill that just yet because that could just be a bad day. And so, um, yeah, so kill every ad set below your break even ROAS in the last three days, including that day. And then simplified break even ROAS formula. So if you don't know how to calculate your break even return on ad spend, 
um, you just do the selling price on your website over the selling price minus the cost. So the selling price over the margin. And this is a simplified formula because it doesn't take into account the fees and it doesn't also, it also doesn't take into account all your other expenses like, you know, um, hiring virtual assistants and, you know, other, other expenses that you might have in generating content, things like that. So it's not, a, you know, it's a simplified formula, but it's good enough to use to optimize. So you want to know what your break-even row as is and then anything below it, you want to kill that. And then you want to scale horizontally, like I said. So every day you want to create as many new lookalike audiences as possible. And so make audiences similar to what's already working. You can test new countries. You can test new source audiences, like I said. So you can test these lesser known lookalike audiences instead of testing the basic ones. And every day you want to create as many as possible and consistently create new audiences. And so you can set a goal. I'm going to create, you know, five or 10 lookalike audiences every day to start scaling horizontally. And the goal is to consistently increase your ad spend by finding new profitable audiences. And so that's the general launch strategy, guys. I hope it makes sense. And in the next lesson, I'm going to be talking more about the scaling by grouping strategy that I was showing you um, a quick overview of. And that one really helps you increase your, you know, your ad spend to the next level as well by focusing in on some of the, ad, on some of the lookalike audiences that are you know, shown to work really well. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson.